Buckle up, it's gonna be a long video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Bean here, and today I wanted to go through some of my books that I have not read. Um, I talk a lot about how I have a lot of unread books on my shelves, and I do. I have noticed that the majority of them are, are series. They're actual, like, full-length series. Like, this entire pile, except for one book, is a series of books. I've got, like, all these are different series. It's so I went through and took off the majority, not all of, um, the standalone books that I still really do want to read. And so I'm going to go through some of them with you today. Um, not so much to convince you to read them, but just share the ones that I have. And my hair's being weird, okay. And yeah, just to share the ones that I do want to read. So these are in no particular order, except for the fact that they are on the piles at my feet. There are three piles. So yeah, let's see what happens. The first one I'm going to mention is going to be The Very Secret Society of Witches by Sangu Mandana. Uh, this is a witchy story that came out last year that follows a nanny who is a witch who is hired to teach two children in a house um, about their witchy powers. But uh, witches are not supposed to be near each other because magic is so unknown. And there's a guy in this house, and I think it's a found family romance from what I remember hearing about it. And honestly, it just sounds so adorable, and I've heard very good things about it. I'm not going to give you, like, a long description of each and every book, because then we'd just be here, like, forever. So, yeah. Next book, and this is a bit of a summary. Just about anything by Riley Sager. I have not read a Riley Sager book yet don't come at me for it, but I do want to read Riley Sager. I've heard very good things. Uh, I do want to start with their early stuff and then work towards the more recent one. This is the second book they came out with. The first one is Final Girls, um, but yes, so I am excited to read these. They're all thrillers. The next author, um, well, book, because I've read two other books by this author, and that is The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. I really liked um, the Sundown Motel, and I did like the Cold Case Files book that they wrote a lot. That was probably my favorite of the two that I've read. Um, it's a, they're a mystery thriller writer, um, and I actually don't know what this one is about, but I assume that there's a haunted house or something of the sort. I don't know, but I'm still very, very intrigued. Next, I actually have a book that I got in a book box, and that is The Sleepless by Victor Manibo. I'm like 98% sure this is a standalone. I didn't actually look, but this is um, basically kind of a speculative, speculative uh, pandemic book uh, that approaches what if a quarter of the population ended up with a disease that caused them to no longer need to sleep. Um, I'm curious. I'm intrigued. This book is really cool looking, so I'm very intrigued by it. Um, and it came in one of the unplugged boxes this year, so I'm very excited. All right, this one is one that I am intrigued by, I haven't heard much about, and that is All the Murmuring Bones by A.G. Slatter. I picked this one up on a whim last year at some point because all I read was this is a goth mermaid story, and I went, sign me up, I'm intrigued. So a family has uh, basically made a deal with mermaids in order to ensure safe passage for their ships by promising a child from each generation to the mermaids. To the mer- however, they have been unable to upkeep this deal, and our main character's grandmother is determined to bring this deal back around, and so... Um, it's a story of dark family secrets, magic and witches, and creatures of myth and the sea. Of strong women and the men who seek to control them. So I'm intrigued. I'm curious to see how this is. I, like I said, I have heard very little about it at all. The next one is another book I actually got from Unplugged, which I got a fair number of uh, standalones from them, which is really nice. And that is The Summoning by J.P. Smith. Uh, this is a story about a a necromancer or someone who can speak with the dead who I think finds out she has slight necromantic powers or necrotic powers which intrigued it has to do with 9-11 and say she holds seances and I'm intrigued by this concept it sounds very witchy um, 
I have not actually heard anything about this book before either, so I'm very intrigued by a lot of these books that I'm not hearing anything about. Because that's what I want to read, is what no one else reads. <laughs> I'm weird, I don't know. Um, switching over to a romance, I do want to read Sim uh, Simmer Down by Sarah Smith. This is a food truck romance, which honestly, right there, I'm intrigued. I love food romances for some reason. I just think that they're so sweet and there's so much fun because food, um, especially in my current relationship, food is uh, a way that we express that we love each other. Is like we make each other food. And it's, that's how you make each other happy. It's a love language for us, if you will. And so I love that concept. It, it hits home for me. I love it. So I'm intrigued to actually read about it. So the next book, I don't actually know what it's about, which is interesting because I was super excited for this book, and I'm still very excited for this book, but I don't know what it's about. And that is Song of Song of Silver Flame Like Night by Amelia Wenzhou. Dragons, Zolly I know. I really, I, I feel like I knew when I first looked at this book, and I have since forgotten. And I feel like whenever I hear anyone else talk about it, they never talk about what it's actually about. It's a little bit of a longer book, but it's about the same length as her other series, um, as the other books in her, um, the Blood, the Blood Air series, the Blood Air trilogy, so. I do want to read this, and I'm 98% sure again that it's standalone. Alright, this next book, I all I know about it is I believe that this is a Peter Pan retelling. It is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. I read the other Aidan Thomas book, Cemetery Boys, and absolutely loved it. It was a great story. I really enjoyed it. And so I want to read another book by them. So this is their other book. <laughs> um, and I believe it has to do with Peter Pan, but that's all I know. I, I'm going into these blind. This is kind of what I like to do. Alright, getting back into some books that I used to read a long time ago, I like my heist books, and it's been a long time since I've read a heist book, and so I do want to read The Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead. This, all I know is it's a heist book, and it's been recommended to me by like three different co-workers, so apparently now I really need to read it. The next one I have is actually mostly a, um, an, an author by. I read a book by this author and now I want to read everything that they have written and that is The Last Chance Library by Freya Sampson. I read The Lost Ticket by Freya Sampson and absolutely devoured that book. It was so cute. It was so sweet and I do want to get more into some literary fiction, some kind of not so focused on romance all the time, not so focused on fantasy and, s and mystery, but just kind of almost slice of life every once in a while. They are kind of refreshing and a good palate cleanser for me. So I do want to read this one, especially when they're really sweet stories. So I have high hopes. All right, next I have on this list is I have Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. Honestly, I would like to read a lot more of T. Kingfisher's work. I've read two books by them, I believe now. Um, I read What Moves the Dead last year, and then I read The Hollow Places, I believe. The Hollow Place, something like that, um, by them a year or two before. And I absolutely devoured them. They are creepy, they are great stories, and this is about a character who does not want to be a hero, and actively does is trying not to be and ends up having to be a hero anyways, and has to do these weird things, like uh, seemingly impossible tasks, build a dog of bones, sew a cloak of nettles, and capture moonlight in a jar. So, um, I'm intrigued. It's a short book. All of their books are short, and they're, but they're so good. They do, it, so much happens in a short period of time. It's great. I love it. Alright, going off of the literary fiction, a book that I've actually had on my shelves for quite a while is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Taulez. Um, I don't really know a lot about this book. I'm not gonna lie. Hold on. Alright, so this is a historical fiction book that takes place in the early 1900s, 1922, and it follows a count who is put on house arrest at a fancy hotel and basically about be, being stuck at this hotel. He ends up making a lot of friends and meeting, not maybe not making friends is the right way to put it, and he ends up meeting a lot of people in this hotel and learning about their lives and how he impacts them, and he ends up having to save a little girl and um, kind of the repercussions of that and what he ends up having to work through and his past and all of that. This has been a very popular book for a very long time um, at the library. 
And honestly, I'm more just curious about it than anything else. I want, I would like to, like I said, I'd like to get more into some literary fiction. And this is always one of the top ones on the list to read. So we'll see for historical fiction. We'll see. All right. And if we're going to go with uh, books that I'm not exactly sure what they're going to be about. Uh, Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. I actually started the audiobook for this one at one point but I think there was something wrong with the audiobook file that I had because it was corrupt somehow because it would stop in the middle of one sentence and start up like in the middle of a different sentence and they, they didn't match up and it confused me so much so either something was corrupted or this book doesn't make sense so now I just really want to read it to know if this book makes sense or not I don't know what it's about I just know it's it's huge. It's an epic it's an epic book. I do I do know that this has to do with historical documents. That's what I know and multiple POVs, multiple timelines kind of thing as well. So that always can get a little a little hairy if it's not quite done in the best way, but I've heard excellent things about the book. So, we'll see. So the next book that I have is one that I'm very curious about. Um, the tagline is Meet the Cure for the Human Disease. And that is Leech by Hiron Enes. Um, Enes? I'm sorry. Uh, but this is compared to Wuthering Heights but with worms, which has me very confused. I did not enjoy Wuthering Heights. But the tagline has me curious. And this was actually recommended on a podcast I listened to at one point. Um, but this was a while ago, and I actually got this book on discount because it's damaged, so that was cool. Um, so this, ta I believe this takes place in Northern Europe, and it follows an institute that's attempting to replace all of the doctors with the new ones that know everything, all this updated stuff, but there's some sort of parasite. I'm not sure. So, we'll see. I'm not sure how it relates to Wuthering Heights which is just all about emotional abuse. So we'll see. I did not like Wuthering Heights, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so the next book that I have is by an author that I was recommended when I first started getting into thrillers, and that's D um, Darcy Coates. And this is House of Shadows. Uh, this is a haunted house story about a girl whose family falls into ruin and she's offered a boon when she, when a wealthy man asks for her hand in marriage and so when she accepts she needs to go up to like the north woods north woods uh life in northwood a vast and unnaturally dark mansion situated hours from civilization you know this almost sounds more like wuthering heights than anything i don't know we'll see but apparently it's a haunted house because doors randomly slam and the piano plays itself in the middle of the night. Blood drips a macabre warning down the walls. And there's spirits in the house. So we'll see. I'm curious about it. It's another very... It's a short book. Um, but I do want to read Darcy... Uh, Darcy... Wow. I do want to read Darcy Coates. I have heard very good things. All right. The next book that I have is one that I've actually had for quite a while. And it's The Last Flight by Julie Clark. And this piqued my interest. It's about two women who are on the run, who are running away, and they happen upon meeting each other in an airport, and they, like, switch identities, so that way um, they can run away from their respective lives, but they end up with the other person's problems, so I'm intrigued on how that would work and if that would actually work at all, but yeah, so... This was one of the first Book of the Month books that I got back in 2020 been a while. Next I have one that I ordered, I think I pre-ordered this one actually, and that is Sing Me Forgotten by Jessica S. Olsen. This is a Phantom of the Opera retelling, and Callie was recommending this one to me actually. She said that it was very well done. Um, it's a short, short retelling of a very long book, so I'm curious. Um, but yeah, so I'm curious to see what it is. All I know, Phantom of the Opera retelling. The next one I have is also another thriller. Actually, this one might be a horror, and that is The Sacrifice by Rin Shippetto. I haven't read a Rin Shippetto book since The Girl from the Well. The tagline says, He who offers the sacrifice controls the god's eye. The first to feed, the second to seed, the third to wear, the fourth to birth, the fifth to serve, the sixth to lure, the seventh to consume, the last to wake. 
So basically, it's a Hollywood film crew that's testing this ancient myth, and I think that sounds absolutely fascinating. So, yes. Um, and I did like Rinch Petto's writing last time I read it, but I haven't read it for years. It's been literal years <laughs> since I've read a book by them. So, said they were warned, they didn't listen. I like it. Also, this cover is so cool. Like, look how cool this cover is. I love it. Alright, another, another thriller author that I have been told by multiple people to read is Scott Carson. Now, The Chill is what is a book that I actually picked up on a blind book date. I go into horror knowing nothing. That is the point for me. Um, and the nice thing about most horror books is that, like, the summaries are short and they don't give anything away. Here, I'm just gonna read this because this is just easier. Still waters run deep. Far upstate in New York's ancient forests, a drowned village lies beneath the dark waters of the uh, Chilliwaukee Reservoir. Early in the 20th century, the town was destroyed for the greater good, bringing water to the millions living downstate. Or at least that's what the politicians from Manhattan insisted at the time. The local families settled, settled, there, before, settled there since before America's founding were forced from their land, but they didn't move far, and some didn't move at all. Now, a century later, a dark prophecy looms, and the time has come for it to be fulfilled. I love the idea of modern prophecies for things that we've done that we're now like, oh yeah, it was fine, and now it's like, oh, crap. Just because I love adding that to, like, modern day. I think that is so fascinating and such a fun way to just throw everything out the window because, like, we don't do prophecies. Prophecies for us are always fantastical, and they're always they always have to do with magic. And sometimes maybe it's just like yeah, you you messed up. You're gonna have to pay for it. So I think that's gonna be great. There may there may be magic. There might be fantastical elements. There are thrillery elements. They kind of get intertwined a lot, but. I love that concept, so I am here for this. I'm so excited. <laughs> Alright, next book that I have is one that I picked up because of a podcast I listened to, and the podcast was Rabbits, and the book is Rabbits by Terry Miles. This is a mystery that is kind of parallel to the podcast that they did, are doing, finished. I think they finished Rabbit. Rabbits is done. The Rabbits is done. It's the, the side one that's not. But this is not the podcast, it's a whole different story, which if you have read, if you have listened to Rabbits, I don't need to say any more. If you haven't, if you like speculative horror and you like the whole like kind of found footage kind of stuff and mysteries that don't fully get solved, but there's cults and there's stuff like this, you should listen to the podcast Rabbits. It's not that long, but it is so well done. The next book that I have is one that, again, I've had for this this for a while, and that's Romanoff by Nadine Brands. I still haven't read this, and I'm kind of ashamed about that, <laughs> but I haven't read it. I've had it for a long time. It is a, re it is a retelling of the Anastasia Romanov story um, of the Duchess, so... But it's basically... Here, I'll just read you this first line because this is why I want to read this book still. Anastasia... Nastya Romanov was given a single mission to smuggle an ancient spell into her suitcase on her way to exile in Siberia. Like, I'm... I'm curious now. I'd, I'd like to know what spell she's smuggling and how do you some... How do you smuggle a spell? Like, is it just a piece of paper? Is it a bag? Is it a bottle? What is it? I want to know! The next one that I have is one that I've actually started before, and I actually think I got like halfway through this book and I put it down. I, I kind of regret putting it down. And that's The Wolf and in the Whale by Jordana Max Brodsky. This is a mix of Inuit and Norse mythology uh, for a frozen Arctic adventure. And that's all I needed to know, and I was really getting into this book um, I put it down for a long time when I had a reading slump and never picked it up again. I got over halfway through, I want to say, so hopefully I can pick it up and read it again. I'm curious. 
We're almost there, I promise, guys. The next two are actually just kind of a pair of books that I really just want to read. They're by the same author, and we've got The Night Circus and The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. I have not read either of these, but I want to. I really myself in the face. I do want to read these books. I have heard mixed things about them, depending on the person and depending on the reading style. I have a feeling I'm gonna like them. So I'm excited. I do want to read these very much so. Again, they're fantastical. That's all I know about them. I don't want to know anymore. Going back at the beginning of the video, I talked about food romances that I enjoyed. I should have put these together. I didn't think about it. But When in Rome by Sarah Adams is a newer release, like with the beginning of this year, end of last year, I believe. Um, and it's all about food and restaurants and Rome, Kentucky. I just want to read it. I'm curious. It's food. It's it's food and romance. I, I enjoy this immensely. The next book that I have is one, again, that I've had for a while. It is a bit of a historical fiction, and that's going to be City of Thieves by David ben Benioff. Um, this takes place during uh, the Nazi siege on Leningrad, so... Um, and it follows two thieves, actually, as they try to escape. So I am curious. It's not a long read, but I've been told multiple times that this is a very good historical fiction to get into. Next is basically a book that... Actually, no, this book I got in another book box uh, a while ago. I think this was... I don't remember when I got... I, this one was a while ago. And that is Year of the Reaper, Reaper by Makia Lucifer. This is a Count of Monte Cristo retelling, which is probably one of my favorite classics books ever, is The Count of Monte Cristo. Um, and it's, it's, it's a female retelling of The Count of Monte Cristo, and that's all I needed. And she's got a mace, like, she has a mace. Alright, the next book that I have is one that I actually, I'm intrigued to read mostly because I've had, I've heard mixed feelings about it, and that is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This is a dark academia with witchcraft story of someone in high school, I want to say. She's at a boarding school. Yeah, so I'm intrigued. It's a really cool cover, but I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. And the last book that I really do want to read is The Grace Year by Kim Leggett. Kind of sounds a little bit Hunger Games-esque, but all women are believed to have like magical powers that seduce men, and so when they turn 16, they're sent off to try and get rid of that magic, but not everyone comes back. I don't know. I, I'm intrigued by it. I'm a little confused by it, but I do remember Callie read it and enjoyed it and told me I needed to read it and made me buy it, so... I have a copy, and I do want to read it, so yes. That's what I got, all right? Like, as of right now, filming this is almost 30 minutes long, <laughs> so hopefully this video is not too terribly long. I hope you had a good drink and a snack and all of that. But yeah, if you think I should start any of these or should do like a reading vlog with these, let me know, because I'm actually trying to do some more reading vlogs. Uh, maybe, we'll see. But yeah, so that's what I got for you guys here today. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what books I should read. Let me know some of your guys' favorite standalones or some standalones you're looking forward to or that you want to read. I want to know because sometimes I just don't want to commit to a full series because you know what? Sometimes your girl just don't got time for that. Um, don't got the commitment for that all the time. Some days, yes. Other days, just no. So yeah. That's what I got for you guys here today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below, and comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep reading. Bye!